All right, I think we can get started. Um, thanks for joining this session about uh, Podman desktop. Um, so this session is about some really cute little seals. And if, there they are. <laughs> so um, uh, Podman desktop is a, is a fairly new project uh, that is kind of uh, trying to address some uh, pain points, especially for developers uh, or for people working with containers. Um, on their uh, on their local machine, um, especially with kind of the, the more recent changes in uh, in the strategy of uh, of uh, the company Docker and Docker Desktop, um, there was kind of a, a need from the community for an open source project. So uh, this is Podman Desktop. So before we talk about uh, Podman Desktop, uh, maybe to give you a little bit of background on uh, the project Podman itself, um, which sits uh, behind Podman Desktop. So Podman itself is a way to you know, uh, interact with, uh, with containers. It's a very fast and lightweight way with, uh, of working with containers. So there's no uh, big kind of daemon like you would have with, uh, with Docker. Um, so it, uh, it allows for a much faster experience. Um, of course, it's open source. Um, it's also more secure because it's by default uh, rootless. Um, and so you can use uh, rootless containers and don't ne necessarily need uh, ele elevated privileges. And of course, it's compatible with you know the normal uh, containers that you would build, even if you built a container with uh, Docker or with uh, Build or with any kind of uh, open uh, container initiative, so OCI compliant uh, containers. So. Um, for those who aren't familiar with uh, how to use uh, Podman, it's very similar to Docker. So um, you can use it to run, uh, build, push uh, container images, um, but you can also use it to create pods, um, you know, kind of as the name would, would imply, uh, and allows you to work a little bit uh, more closely with, uh, with Kubernetes. So for example, in terms of images, you know, again, if you're familiar with, uh, with Docker, uh, where you would do Docker push or Docker pull is exactly the same with, uh, with Podman. And in fact, you could just kind of alias um, Docker to Podman, and then you can use uh, uh, Podman you know, to use uh, with uh, Docker commands too. They're uh, fairly compatible. Um, so you can see here, you know, like if I wanted to list uh, my container images, I can just do Podman images. Um, if I wanted to build my container, it's just Podman build uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and then if I want to run my container, I can just do podman run. Uh, I can look at the containers that are running with podman ps uh, or attached to a container and so on. So again, if you're familiar with Docker, this is exactly the same, right? Um, what's a little bit different with uh, podman is that you can also create uh, pods, um, which is kind of interesting. So if, you're, uh, if you know uh, Kubernetes and the concept of pods, this is uh, exactly the same. So you have multiple containers that can go in one pod and they share, uh, for example, network and, uh, and resources, which can be uh, kind of interesting. And I'll show that uh, in, in a little demo uh, later on as well, where you know, I'll, I'll show a, a particular use case that could be interesting. Um, so in terms of the architecture of Podman, you can see that compared to this is uh, how uh, the Docker daemon works. Uh, Podman does not have, you know, does not use uh, a root context uh, by default. So that's kind of uh, an architectural difference that makes it uh, more flexible and, and usable. So um, Podman and Podman Desktop, uh, they're developed by uh, Red Hat, which is also the company that, uh, that I work for. And our container philosophy is built on uh, kind of make uh, tools that do kind of one thing and, and do it well instead of having, you know, Docker daemon, which can do a lot of things, um, but is, uh, you know, uses a lot of resources and is kind of beefy. Um, so we have different tools kind of uh, for different purposes. So you can see Podman for uh, managing and running containers, uh, Podman Desktop, which uh, we'll, uh, we'll dive into a little bit more. But there's also projects like Builda for uh, specifically for building container images uh, in different ways. Uh, there's Scopio to uh, interact with registries. And so you can, for example, uh, go and um, inspect images remotely without having to pull them down, which is something uh, 
um, that uh, that the Docker uh, command couldn't do. I'm not sure if it can do right now. Uh, and for example, C run to as a container runtime. So there's a bunch of different projects. There's also Project Cryo for, for Kubernetes and stuff like that. So uh, that's uh, all the projects uh, that Red Hat works on. So one of them, of course, is Podman Desktop. That's, uh, that's why we're here today. So Podman Desktop um, is a uh, tool um, mostly focused on the, uh, for the application developers to be able to work with containers without being, you know, like uh, experts in all the different uh, Docker commands, like me, for example, I'm a, I'm a software engineer, and um, I started working with uh, containers. This is you know a while ago, maybe ten years ago. Um, yeah, I think just about. <laughs> um, and so it was you know really learning about you know how to run containers, how to build containers. Very complicated. Uh, if you're just a, if an application developer, you want to be able to focus on your code, right? So this, uh, with Podman Desktop, it's trying to uh, make that a little bit easier. So with a nice uh, UI um, that, uh, that allows you to do uh, different things like building containers, like running containers, creating pods, uh, but also interacting with, uh, with Kubernetes um, and creating Kubernetes resources. Um, it's uh, of course has support for uh, OCI uh, registries, so the Docker Hub, for example, or Quay.io or uh, a GitHub registry, your local registry, your your private registry, so it can uh, plug into those. Um, in terms of of those pods that I was talking about, um, so you can create pods uh, from containers just from the UI. You can just select. I want to uh, create a pod with uh, this container and this container, and then it'll create a pod, and then they can uh, share the network. You can generate uh, Kubernetes YAML directly from those uh, pods as well. So you can just say, hey, now uh, create a uh, Kubernetes manifest that has a definition of this pod, and then I can deploy that uh, directly to a Kubernetes that might run on my local machine um, or remotely as well. Um, and so speaking of uh, Kubernetes, so uh, Podman tries to make life a little bit easier in that respect too. So um, for example, OpenShift is, uh, is an implementation of Kubernetes, um, but also you know, any kind of uh, other uh, Kubernetes. The only thing is that, for example, with, uh, with OpenShift, uh, Podman Desktop can uh, uh, help you even uh, create in, uh, an OpenShift local on your local machine. So that makes it easy to uh, work with, uh, with OpenShift um, locally. So that makes it very easy for developers. It also um, can enable you to uh, create, for example, a mini cube on your local machine or a kind cluster, so Kubernetes in Docker. So it supports uh, all sorts of uh, different um, ways of dealing with, uh, with containers. Um, and then you can also extend Podman Desktop with uh, different capabilities. So um, the same way as you can uh, with uh, more recent uh, Docker Desktop. So you can use those same extensions, uh, Docker uh, ex uh, Desktop extensions. Uh, you can use them in, uh, in Podman Desktop as well. Um, so for example, you can see there uh, in, the, uh, in this example, there's like uh, disk usage extension, a log explorer, and an OpenShift extension um, that you know that can help you with your again with your local development to have some insight into what's going on. Um, you can also extend the platform itself, right? So Podman Desktop itself. So you can see that you know you can add kind of more uh, registries. You can add menus and actions uh, the way that uh, that you see fit. You can see, for example, also you know different. Uh, container runtime, so you don't necessarily need to use uh, Podman engine with uh, Docker Desktop. You can also, or sorry, with Podman Desktop, uh, you can also use uh, uh, Docker uh, runtime if you have uh, a Docker runtime on your local machine and you would like to use Podman Desktop uh, for a nice UI experience, that's possible as well. You can use Lima. Um, so that's also uh, possible. So it's trying to, you know, again, make it meet the developers where they are uh, and make it easy. So let's see this in, uh, in some demos, right? Because that's way more fun and interesting. 
uh, to see uh, to see this in uh, in action. So let's go and look at uh, Podman Desktop. So I have it uh, running here, and um, so if I go to my dashboard, so when I open Podman Desktop, by the way, you can. Um, install Podman Desktop on Windows, uh, on Mac, on Linux. Um, so on Windows, it uses uh, WSL. Um, and on Mac, um, I think you can just install it. And on Linux, it just runs uh, natively, um, which is what I'm using here. Uh, we are at Open Source Summit after all, right? And so here we can see Podman. We can see that it's uh, running this uh, particular version. Um, it says Docker socket compatibility. Uh, it's not reachable. That makes sense because I'm not running Docker on, on my machine. I'm running, uh, I'm running Podman. And uh, so we can see that, for example, I have a developer sandbox uh, from, uh, from Red Hat running, and it uh, notices that. And I also have an instance of OpenShift local on my local machine, and it's also noticing that that's installed and that it stopped and I could uh, start it up and we'll, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, it, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, running a Kubernetes, a full-blown Kubernetes instance on your local machine takes uh, a little bit of resources, right? So uh, we'll, I'll run this in a little bit and then we'll see that uh, you know my fan might start <laughs> blowing a little bit. Uh, and then uh, we can see here some of the extensions uh, that, uh, that exist. For, uh, for Podman desktop. So in this case, I have, of course, uh, Podman as my container runtime, and I also have a Docker compatibility uh, installed. So when I run Docker commands on my local machine, they're all automatically translated to uh, Podman uh, commands. And we can also see, for example, I have uh, OpenShift local, I have Kubernetes and Docker, and then developer sandbox. So I can quickly see at a glance what's, uh, what's there. So of course, uh, let's uh, look at our containers. And so I have a few images already here, but let's start from, uh, from, the, from the beginning, right? So I have uh, a little project here. So this is uh, based on, um, it's, a, it's a Java application. Any Java developers here? Oh, not very many. I'm a little disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm a Java developer. Uh, so um, this is uh, based on uh, Quarkus. So Quarkus is uh, a, a Java stack that, uh, that uh, runs much faster, has a much smaller footprint, and works really well with, uh, with containers and Kubernetes. So uh, I already created um, the, uh, the source code for this file. And I have a, uh, what's cool with, uh, with Quarkus is that it supplies uh, Docker files kind of when you instantiate a project. So I have, for example, here this Docker file uh, that I can use to run my application on a, uh, in a container with the JVM. And so let's, uh, let's uh, now start using this, right? So I'm going to build my container. So I'm going to go to build an image. Then I can select a uh, container file. Um, and we go to source, uh, main, and it was in the Docker folder. So here we have, let's uh, choose this Docker file, JVM. And then I can specify the build context, which is actually in a different folder. So you can select that as well. Quarkus observability in this case. And then I can uh, give it some random name or I can uh, specify a specific name. Let's call this one uh, Quarkus uh, observability. And then uh, build. So for uh, developers, this should be fairly straightforward, right? I mean, uh, yes, they have to have a, uh, a Docker file somewhere or a container file. Um, but from there, we can uh, we can build a container image pretty easily. So we can see that you know it was uh, successfully tagged. So we created a uh, a new container image, and now we can uh, be done with that. And here it is, 22 seconds ago, um, and uh, it was created. So we can run it. Um, now you're going to see that it's not going to run perfectly because it has a dependency on, uh, on a database, on an external database, and on, uh, on, um, on a tracing stack, so based on uh, Jaeger. But let's run it anyway. So um, again, we can choose kind of uh, what is the container name or let it uh, define whatever it wants. We can uh, set a specific entry point into this uh, container. We can just leave that as it is. We could. 
supply the volumes. Something that's cool with Docker Desktop is, uh, so it, uh, it notices what port you're trying to expose from your image. Um, if I was already using this port for another application, it would notice that and it would suggest a different, uh, it would map a, a different port to your container. So that's also something that sometimes developers struggle with, with like, hey, you know, how do I map ports and everything? So that's uh, also out of the box. And then, you know, we can set environment variables and then uh, you know, do some more advanced stuff, uh, such as networking or uh, you know, like make this uh, a root full container if we need extra uh, options. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave it simple like that and we're gonna run it. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so I can see what I'm doing. And then uh, start this container. So now I'm running this container and um, we see that there's an error uh, just as I was expecting because it's trying to connect to a database that's not running. And so uh, if you're familiar with uh, running containers, they run in their own kind of uh, network. So what you could do to, uh, to solve this, because I, what I can do is I can start up a container image as well, but it's still not gonna find it because it's not in the same network. So there's two solutions to this. So you could use a Docker Compose file and then uh, define, you know, kind of, hey, this uses the, the same network, um, which is also supported by uh, Podman and Desktop. So this is one path. Uh, I'm going down a different path, um, and that is I'm gonna create a pod with my different containers, um, and then they will share the same network because they are uh, in the same pod. So I'm selecting, the container that I just started, right, the Quarkus uh, observability, and then with those other two containers that I'd already created um, and configured with environment variables, so <laughs> I, I, I knew that they have the same, that I, that the database has the same username and password than uh, what my application is uh, requiring. So then uh, here we can see, we can create a pod with those three different uh, containers, and uh, let's see if it works, right? Everybody crossing their fingers with me. So we're creating the pod and probably I will have an error the first time. Let's see. Uh, so it's this one. And um, I see all the logs of the different uh, containers here. And um, it's actually not able to find my database because it wasn't started, started up yet, right? So my container is, my application container is starting at the same time as the database. And so the database wasn't up and running yet. So I just need to quickly restart it. So uh, I click on the containers there. I'm gonna restart my container one more time. And now we can see that it is actually running and able to uh, connect with the, with the Postgres database that I'm also running on my local machine. Um, and so let's take a look and see if this is working. So this is on localhost 8080. And we can see that, you know, yay, we have our application uh, running and I actually have this uh, little endpoint uh, fruit that should return some, uh, some fruits. Um, and maybe I haven't configured it to actually populate it with uh, data, but let's imagine that <laughs> there was some data in this database. Uh, I could add it and rebuild it, but I think uh, maybe then we'll, uh, we'll run out of time. So that's uh, you know, how uh, developers can you know, fairly easily create containers, uh, see their containers, manage them, uh, create pods with them. So we can now delete this. Um, and um, so some more things that you can do with Podman Desktop. So aside from you know, just like generally managing containers, you can prune, you know, so if you have a bunch of containers sitting around on your local machine, they take up a lot of space. Uh, so you can just say prune, which means that all the containers that aren't running in, at the moment are gonna be deleted. You can do the same thing uh, for your images as well. So you can delete all the images that aren't attached to, uh, to a container. Um, and then you see this uh, play Kubernetes YAML. And so let's see if uh, uh, maybe we'll create our pod again and then uh, we'll create a Kubernetes YAML for it as well. So I'm gonna select this. 
And then we can decide, you know, do we want to use a uh, Podman container image to run this YAML because yes, Podman desktop can also run uh, Kubernetes uh, YAMLs. So a, a pod definition, for example, or we can uh, deploy it to, uh, to a Kubernetes um, cluster. And so this is to play uh, a Kubernetes YAML file, um, but we can also create one. So let's, uh, we can look at that here. So if we look here, um, we can see our logs, we can see how to open our application, a browser and so on and so forth. Um, then um, in terms of the images as well, so we can uh, build our images, we can pull them down and we can also push them to a registry. So here I have a different container image and if I wanted to uh, push this to, uh, to, a, to a Kubernetes cluster, for example, I can say push an image to uh, Kubernetes and Docker cluster because I have that ex extension or I can push the image to a developer sandbox cluster. So speaking of which, uh, let's take a look here real quick. So we have, um, if you go to developers.redhat.com, uh, there's this developer sandbox thing here and that gives you this uh, free kind of playground um, based on uh, OpenShift, which again is a Kubernetes uh, instance. And so by running that, I have here um, a, 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 a namespace on Kubernetes. Let's delete our previous version of our deployment. And then uh, I'm gonna try and deploy it to there. So um, we can do this in a few different ways. So uh, I can try to push it uh, from here, so let's try that. Oh, it says I don't have a running connection, so I may be not connected to the right place. Let's try that. And push it. Okay, well, <laughs> let's uh, go over here to one of the extensions that we have. So I have installed two extensions to, uh, to my uh, Podman desktop. One of them is, the, is an OpenShift extension that allows me to interact with, uh, with OpenShift. So let's see, I believe this is the right context. So that's also something that's uh, kind of cool with Podman Desktop is um, if you're working with Kubernetes, you need to have a Kubernetes context to be able to interact with it. So that's also something that you can add here in, uh, in Podman Desktop. So I have, for example, uh, my local OpenShift uh, that is not running. Uh, but I should have this uh, sandbox, ah, here it is. So now I'm switching to this uh, context, change. And now if we uh, select an image to deploy, so we can see here, uh, let's try this one. And now I'm gonna deploy it. And so it should push, <laughs> fail to deploy. Ah, nice, thank you. <laughs> The live demo effect. All right, uh, let's try push to open shift and deploy. And that should uh, push my image to, uh, to the internal registry in open shift and then deploy it as well. So let's see if that works. So oh, it's not there, it's in our Firefox. Okay, so we can see here that my application is uh, actually being pushed and then uh, we'll see if, uh, if it'll start running. Um, but you can see that you can interact with uh, different clusters uh, pretty easily from, from this thing. So you can, again, add different uh, Docker extensions as well. So for example, I have this uh, Aqua Trivi uh, Docker extension to scan for container images. So this could be interesting as well for developers to, you know, kind of preemptively scan their container images to make sure that there are no vulnerabilities uh, before they push their code and then go through their uh, CI/CD pipeline, where ideally there's uh, some sort of security scan going on, right? But that means that they have to wait for you know this whole uh, cycle to happen. So it's kind of nice to to be able to do that on their local machine. So in this case, uh, the nice people at uh, Aquasec have uh, have created this container scanning extension. So um, well, we can select one image and then we would scan it. And then, uh, you know, after a little while, it would, uh, you know, tell me what, if there if there are any vulnerabilities in this uh, in this container. So, um, 
couple more things uh, that we could look for is, for example, our volumes, right? The, the, the storage that's behind our containers. So we can see also that we can create volumes. We can collect the usage data to see, you know, how much uh, resources and space is being used. By the way, you can do that for your containers as well to see how much uh, memory and CPU uh, are being used by containers uh, when they're running. Um, and then we can see here in our settings that we can uh, supply, for example, um, registries that we're connected to. So in this case, uh, I have a connection to uh, a Quay registry to push my extension or to push my container images. And then we can also see, um, you know, kind of uh, where we can add more extensions to Podman Desktop itself. And then uh, if we wanted to add some more uh, desktop extensions from Docker Desktop, we can do that here. Um, and so that's kind of a real quick overview of, uh, of, of Podman Desktop. So as you can see, you can manage containers with it, but you can actually kind of make this into a nice uh, short feedback loop for developers to work with containers and then also interact with, uh, with Kubernetes. So uh, Podman Desktop is available for free. It's a fully open source license, so there's no kind of... Uh, uh, anything that you need to do other than just go to uh, podmandesktop.io and, uh, and try it out. So um, what's next for, for Podman? So it's a project that's uh, it's still in, uh, in uh, well, it's in uh, full development. It's, it is stable, um, but there's a lot of new features still being added. So for example, um, improvements in terms of uh, Windows with uh, Hyper-V support, uh, try to make container startup even faster, uh, enhancements for the Kubernetes YAMLs that are being generated. So right, right now it creates a pod YAML. So let's see, um, uh, perhaps, you know, because in Kubernetes it might be easier to work with deployments and services, so it can maybe generate those. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there's uh, some more kind of uh, development going on in this project. Um, and you know, uh, Podman Desktop is open for suggestions, so you can definitely, you know, provide any kind of uh, things that you think are missing. Uh, it's an open source project, so if you're so inclined, definitely contribute as well. Uh, and um, here's some links to get started with Podman and Podman Desktop. So as you can see, podman-desktop.io is uh, where you can get started. If you have any issues, uh, the community is very responsive uh, and is very eager to help you out. Um, and you know, you get really cute seals to look at when you go to those websites. So um, if you wanna learn more about Podman uh, in particular, so there's a free ebook that's available on developers.redhat.com. Um, so the developers.redhat.com program is very nice. They sponsor some of uh, some of the books that we write, and then uh, because they sponsor them, they can make them available for uh, for for you to download for free, which is uh, which is nice. Um, so if you're interested in you know Java development, apparently there are not very many here, but <laughs> there's some books here. Uh, I'm writing a book on uh, serverless Java, by the way, that should come out uh, pretty soon, and hopefully Red Hat will sponsor that one as well. Uh, but yeah, so uh, take a look at any of those. And then uh, I think that's it. So I hope this was interesting. And um, if you have any questions, I think we still have uh, a little bit of time. So who has questions? I have stickers, <laughs> if that was the question. Thanks. Um, yes, regarding the selection where you click together the pod, man, uh, the pod um, is there a way to also configure those? And will they also be shown in the interface? Because the, the dependency and restarting is quite tedious, I guess. Yeah, um, yes. Trying to think where exactly you would do that. So yeah, you can configure uh, the network topology and all that. Now, if you want to have more control over it, I would recommend using Docker Compose uh, file to you know really kind of define uh, specific uh, properties and values. Because most of what uh, the kind of the Podify does is use the, the properties that you've uh, defined when you create a container image. 
and uh, when you start the container, so it's going to use most of those properties. But yes, you can. Uh, I think there's a lot of improvements still that uh, will go into Podman this of itself. If you use the Podman in the CLI, you can customize uh, the pods uh, a little bit more as well. Thanks. Two really quick ones. Um, number one, uh, does does this use builder under the hood for the Podman build subcommand? Um, I'm just wondering because my understanding is that this was more of a runtime oriented thing versus builder, which kind of has that responsibility until I saw your presentations. So. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's a good question because originally Podman did use builder uh, for the Podman build command. Um, and I think right now it, uh, it, it's built into Podman itself, so it doesn't use uh, Builder anymore. Probably uses the same uh, uh, similar bits to do to do its build, but it's not using uh, Builder anymore, I believe. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. I'm just wondering how, how you think about the kind of separation of responsibilities. Like if, if you need anything more advanced, you end up going to Builder and you get a cross-compatible image, but it's just more feature rich then right Is that basically yeah. okay yeah yeah because uh with builder you can you can also build using basically a, a kind of a bash command yeah. like a set of bash yeah. commands whereas with uh podman build it's just using the you know kind of the classic container files, right like right so it's not very file. sophisticated right right got it okay so that's number one Num number two real quick um so uh, having come from a company that dealt with the harsh realities of Docker desktops licensing change, mm -hmm. um, I'm curious how much of that fed the momentum for this to be where it is now. Um, do you think that this would have, sh should I, just looking at this from a macro level, should I be drawing the correlation that this is kind of really stepped into the spotlight because of those types of changes for enterprises? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's uh, definitely, because of the demand from, from the market, um, there was a lot more priority put into Podman Desktop to uh, kind of prioritize this as a, as a project because, you know, that's something that the community uh, was, was really needing. And, uh, you know, Red Hat was happy to fill that spot, of course. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a correlation between the two. Um, do you know how Podman works on macOS? Is, um, how's the, is it like a VM like Docker Desktop does or, and um, yeah, because an extending it, question is like how volume mounts work and because that's one part of Docker Desktop that works really great on macOS is mm -hmm. like the volume mount. Right. Um, yes, it uses uh, the same kind of VM uh, concept. Um, other than that, I'm not a Mac user, so <laughs> I don't know, you know exactly if it works the same way in terms of volume mounts, but I would assume so. Uh, I haven't heard anything with kind of, oh yeah, the volumes, that doesn't work with Mac. Uh, for sure it does, but yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and then same with uh, Windows, of course, that uh, uses WSL and then also a virtual environment. Maybe I can answer that. Uh, I'm using Podman ah, on Mac. So. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Does it work? Uh, mostly. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a small hitch with the uh, how the volume mounts are working. Uh, whenever I sleep this thing and wake it back up, the same on Mac, I don't know if it matters, uh, the, uh, I need to restart the virtual machine. So it's using mm -hmm. this Podman machine command to create a virtual machine, so I just manage it that way. But the volume mounts break when I sleep it and wake it up. Interesting. Create an issue for that. <laughs> Any more questions? I have uh, um, at the Red Hat booth, there are little uh, Podman stickers. So they're, of course, very cute seal stickers. So definitely stop by the, the Red Hat booth. Um, I have 
stickers, but I don't have Podman stickers. So, but if you're one of the two Java developers here and you want a Quarkus sticker, I have those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no more questions. Then uh, I thank you very much. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs>